بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم التنزيل بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اعلموا انما الحياه الدنيا لعب وله وزينه وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الاموال والاولاد صدق الله العظيم all praise and thanks be to almighty allah may almighty allah send his choices of blessings and peace upon muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his family members his companions and those who follow his footsteps in the day of qiyamah respected brothers and elders in islam when we look into a life of every human being he passes different stages in life the ayat of ayat of the quran which i have recited before you allah makes mention that the first stage in the life of man is that his life is spent in play and thereafter the life turns out to become an amusement and then the third situ- th- th- the third stage is when the person becomes involving involving himself in beautifying himself in spending his time with different things so that he looks attractive that is the third stage in life and the final stage in life of every human being allah says that the people will start to compete with each other and they will start boasting with each other regarding their wealth and their children respected brothers and elders in islam in today's khutba let us discuss about a stage which many of us are in it and that is the stage and that is the time when all of us are youth according to many ulama and according to the quran as well allah says that a person is considered to be a young man a youth until he reaches 40 years of his age so most of us might fit into this so it is an important phase in life and it is a place where this important phase of life is neglected as well when you look into the youth generally in our times as well we hardly see a young boy who is focused who has some responsibility he is he is trying to achieve his goal in life he is treading a path to achieve something we hardly see youth in that type in that type but we, we commonly see youth who are carefree who are reckless there isn't anybody to guide them so they perform salat if they want to they want they neglect so they live a totally a carefree life but respected brothers and elders in islam when we take that phase of life a youth allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another verse he says oh man i have created you when we came to this world all of us we were very big we had hands we had eyes we had legs but we were very very big we couldn't do anything with this stuff we couldn't walk we couldn't talk we couldn't do anything that was the first stage in our life and then there, there came a time when we are youngsters we enjoy strength everything is at its peak we have good intellect when we are youngsters when we have good strength we have courage and so on the third stage the final one every human being has to face is a time when he becomes very very old he is very very old and he cannot do anything so the phase it is in the middle where allah says allah uses the word quwa strength it is one of the most important things each one of us should focus on respect to brothers and elders in islam we see that different types of youth have got different madness you know some when they are around 20 25 they will be fond of they, they they will be adorning themselves they want a branded stuff and you know they want to look very attractive as i mentioned to you before but the saddest part is while they are doing all that they have forgotten the motive of why did allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me this young age they have forgotten that purpose why is that i am enjoying strength i have good knowledge why can't i use it in the correct way either they have not been properly guided or secondly either they don't care about guiding them, their own selves when we look into history uh 
examples could be quoted from the Anbiya alayhi salam. We all of us know that Ibrahim alayhi salam and his incident, how he broke the idols and he told his community that I didn't do it, it was this big idol who did it. We all of us know this incident. But when we look back and when we look at the age of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he did this act, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qalu sami'na fatan yuskaruhum yuqalu lahu Ibrahim. The word fata is used. So ulama say that Ibrahim alayhi salam was a very young boy when he did this act. He wanted to prove to his nation that they were in falsehood. He wanted to bring them to the correct path. So he was a young boy. He used his talent and he did this job. Purpose to guide the people to the correct path. And when we look into the examples of our Sahaba radiallahu anhum, who are the companions of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a youth who is spoken very often, it is Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhum. This Sahabi, he was very young, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent him to Medina to do the groundwork of da'wah before he migrates. So Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu was sent to Medina, and he established Islam in Medina in such a way Within a few years' time, it was the Madanites, the Ansar, they came to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they said, Ya Rasulullah, now it is appropriate, Medina is suitable for you to migrate and we will look after you uh, head to toe. You will be saved from all types of evil. So, respected brothers, who was the base for all this da'wah propagation in Medina? It was Mus'ab ibn Umayr radiallahu anhu. He was a very young Sahabi. And when we take the generations afterwards, the Tabi'un, Atba'ul Tabi'in, when we look into their lives, we see Tariq bin Ziyad, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, when he conquered Spain, he was a young boy who, has, who didn't even reach 20 years of his life. He led an army to Spain, and he was the, he was the leader. There were so many troops behind him, but who was leading the whole group? It was a, a young boy who was less than 20 years. Respected brothers, when we look into our youth of today, leave alone conquering countries, leave, leave alone bringing others to Islam and etc. Leave alone, put that aside and see whether we can bring Islam into our own lives first of all. Let us see how far do I fulfill the commandments of Allah, how far am I an obedient person, obedient slave to Him. And if we can find the correct answer to these questions, obviously, Wallahi, we have answered and we are successful. That is why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sabaatun yudilluhumu allahu fi yudilli yawma la dilla illa dillu. On the day of Qiyamah, there will, no, there will not be a single shade except for the shade of Allah, the arsh of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be granting, giving this shade for seven types of people. Out of the seven, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Shabun nasha'a fi ibadatillah. A young boy who was nurtured, who was brought up in the ibadah, in the worship of Allah. When you speak about ibadah, generally what comes to our, what crosses our mind is that a young boy has to come into the masjid, he has to seclude himself from his friends and he, should, he, he shouldn't show any type of importance to his studies and etc. That is the general meaning we have for ibadah. But respect to brothers, ibadah has even a broader meaning. Ibadah, Salah will be a part of Ibadah. Reciting Quran is part of Ibadah. But whereas uh, a young boy could have good akhlaq in him, good qualities in him, he could improve that. Even that falls under the category of Ibadah. His Mu'asharat, the way he conducts himself at home, the way he, uh, he's, he, the way he interacts with his parents, if he's doing it in the correct way, he also falls under this category. So respect the brothers and elders in Islam. The youth of today, if we are to focus a lot on them, we would see if this is to continue, the future which our community might face is at risk. Because youth are the backbone of the society. Youth are the backbone of the society. For an example, we would see if the boys in university, the students in university, they go on for a strike, they want something, they are asking something from the government. What do they do? Their needs are fulfilled immediately. Why is it? Because the students who are studying at university, they are going to be the future leaders. If their needs are not fulfilled, the future of the country is at risk. Likewise, respect the brothers and elders in Islam, if the Muslim youth are not turned to the correct direction, the community of Muslims are at risk. So what could we do? 
so what can we do for this how could we solve this problem you see some of the youth they are totally engrossed in social media they have not been given proper guidance of how to use it they don't know what they do and they spend their time like that so when we take the phase in life 15 to 25 for an example till a man is totally settled completely you see that age is very important because if a man is brought up with bad manners he hasn't got good ethics in him he hasn't got good morals in him he is at risk because when he becomes an adult a time comes that he has to get married and he has to uh, continue his life he becomes a father one day and then he becomes a grandfather if this young boy was brought up in such an environment where he was carefree he was reckless do you think that this person will be a responsible father no respect to brothers he is not going to be a responsible person so if we have to make this young boy a responsible man we have to start nurturing from his young age from his young age we have to bring him to the correct track that is why nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said when your children are servant teach them salat when they are servant teach them salat why did he say that and there after he said in the same hadith when they reach 10 beat them if they are not performing salat so what does it mean allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us 3 years nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam has given us 3 years of concession okay you take some time to bring salat as a habit in your child's life we give you 1000 days approximately so within 1000 days a father is responsible to teach his son about the rulings of salat if the father is unable to do that when the son is 10 years old and a father doesn't take him to the masjid he's 12 he's 13 and when he's 15 and 16 the father starts thinking why is why is my son, my son making qada of fajr why is my son not uh, paying attention for you know he doesn't miss the masjid he doesn't go for lectures and why does the father think about that whereas the bringing up of that child was it in that environment where that child could find the correct path so respect of brothers and elders in islam number 1 every young boy every youngster should keep in mind that i have to bring taqwa in my life what is taqwa it is the god consciousness to bring the consciousness of allah in our lives it doesn't mean that as i mentioned to you before that we have to spend 100% of our time secluded inside the masjid no we can do whatever activity we have in our life along with that we have to focus more on becoming conscious of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and because of for that basic we have to be punctual in our salat the five daily salat if we can be punctual if we are closer to the masajid in our locality we can perform them in the masjid and then obviously what happens is when we grow up we are nurtured with the masjid so when we are brought up in that environment when we become when we grow old it we will be ambassadors of islam who would be showing the picture to the to the entire world that i am a practicing muslim wherever i go but if a child is not brought up in that way he might change to the environment and he will be shy to prove to the ummah to prove to the world that he is a muslim that is number 1 number 2 the more, most important and the the key factor which affects most of our youngsters these days is the company he is uh, in, involving himself with the company he moves with his friends most of the time you see at times of a father says to his son don't do this but when he meets his friend his friend says no you go for it i will we will look after the rest it will be fine so the child is ready to ignore the 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 father's advice and he is ready to follow his friend because the friend was able to convince his other friend but respect to brothers and elders in islam it is very dangerous for every human being whether he be young or old if he has bad company on the day of qiyamah nabi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says out of regret out of regret on the day of qiyamah those people who had wrong company with them they would be biting their hands they would be biting their hands regretting why did i take so and so as my friend whereas i could have taken such a good man a rasul as my friend a, a saleh as a friend a good a good pious man as my friend because of my evil friend i have come to this level where i am destined to jahannam so that regret is for the person who didn't have proper company in his life 
For an example, if we are always involving ourselves with the good company, good friendship, we would see that maybe in our lives we are not punctual in Salat, but five of my friends, they are punctual in Salat. When the time for Salat comes, what will they do? When five others are going to pray, this boy he cannot sit alone. He is forced to pray. He has to go with them. So when he is brought up in this type of friendship, Salah becomes part of his life. Likewise, if a young boy is used to smoke, when he is with his good friends, with his pious friends, he cannot smoke a cigarette in front of his friend. Why is that? He will feel bad. So, a person having good friendship, he is forced to bring good morals, good manners, to uh, develop his life even without him knowing it. For an example, when we take the fish in the sea, we hardly see that different types of fish swimming together. We don't see a shark, a dolphin and few fish swimming all together. No, we, hardly, we don't see that. But whereas we see the fish which swim in groups, they have got something in common. So all of them swim together. Likewise, respected brothers and elders in Islam, the friends we interact with, we swim, we walk with them, we go with them, we move with them, because we have got something in common. That same Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, al maru ala dini khalili. The person will be upon the religion of his friend. Upon the religion of his friend. You will see so many parents regretting these days as well. I brought up my son in a very good environment. But suddenly when he's reached 15 and 16, when he got used to, he got some company from nowhere, and now he's beyond my control. I cannot control him. So what can I do? So they meet the Hazrat in the masjid, and they tell him, please advise my son. So where did it go wrong? Because of the bad company that child had. So as parents, they should be focusing and they should be aware who are my son's friends so that they can protect their son's future. And third thing is, as you all know, online time stealers, social media and etc. Our youth are involved in themselves 100%. For an example, if a boy is spending two hours of his day in social media, by the time he finishes a month, he has spent so many hours. Maybe he would have spent over a day of that month just for this. So, a youngster should see that they should have some guidance from someone and they should get the correct direction of how to use this stuff if we are into it. And uh, finally, as youth, all of us, most of us, as I mentioned to you before, we are into this category. Every day we should improve our life. We should improve our spirituality. We should improve our mind, our body, our knowledge and all those which are really necessary in life so that we could be successful and we will not regret in our future. For a young boy, he may, maybe he is playful when he is young, but when he grows old, he might think, I wasted my youth. So before that time comes, if he could reform himself right now, it will be a big change and he will not regret in life and he would become a very valuable source for the whole of humanity. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillah.